Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the HLB webinar on e-commerce and VAT. How can you prepare for the new EU legislation? The panellists today are Ludmilla Frangu from HLB Spain, Karen Court from HLB Germany, Maria McConnell from HLB UK, and Gianluca Panizza from HLB Italy and Peter Tillman from HLB Netherlands. Apologies. So the agenda today, first of all, why, why do we need to look at all of this subject? Uh, the introduction to the e-commerce directive, the one-stop shop OSS, and then we'll look at distance selling with the, within the EU and how that's affected. We will then go through a case study in more detail, which is based around a Dutch web shop called Blue Socks, and look at capita selector options, and then look at country specific issues. And we'll go through Spain, Italy, Germany, the Netherlands, and the UK. And then we will round it off with a summary and next step. If you have any questions, please put them into the chat box and we will address those uh, towards the end of the webinar. And, uh, and if we don't have time to do that during the webinar, we will um, address those later. And I'd now like to hand over to Karen. Over to you, Maria. Karen. No, oh, sorry, Maria, <laughs> sorry, Maria. <laughs> First, first slip off of the day, that's fine. Yeah. Um, good <laughs> afternoon, everyone. Um, really, um, why the reason for this is, why are we talking about VAT and e-commerce today? What is the purpose of this presentation? Um, put, put simply, um, this, is, um, this is because there's a new legislation being introduced. It comes into effect um, from 1 July 2021, having been postponed from 1 January 2021 due to uh, the coronavirus pandemic, um, um, it's been put back to take account of businesses um, having other, you know, other problems and other time consuming things to take care of at that point in time. Um, and this new legislation is effectively aimed at simplifying VAT compliance for e-commerce business across Europe. Um, this legislation forms part of a wider package uh, of changes to the European VAT legislation, which um, is aimed at simplifying VAT compliance across the board in Europe, um, at the same time as simplifying and shifting the place of supply of cross-border B2C sales to the place of consumption or destination. Um, the first step in this um, change towards um, this simplification was introduced in 2015. Um, with the launch of the mini one-stop shop, which some of you may already be familiar with. Um, this was aimed at B2C supplies of telecom, telecommunications and other electronically supplied services. So the implementation, implementation of the new one-stop shop is effectively the next step in this legislative change, um, with a, which is a sweeping reform of the VAT e-commerce rules setting to facilitate cross-border trade within the EU, boost, um, boost revenue across the EU, at the same time as hopefully reducing the, the tax gap, fraud, uh, etc. Um, at the same time as the aim of making the compliance for the traders much simpler, or at least that's the plan. So that's, that's what we're trying to explain to you today. So I'm going to hand over to Karen, who's going to talk about things in a bit more detail. Yes, let's see whether the things are really turning better for all of us. So um, we would like to start with the introduction of um, the two main changes for EU, uh, EU, resident, uh, EU resident companies. Um, so there will be changes in the distance selling rules. Um, what really is a distance sale? Um, a distance sale is a cross-border sale if you want so a cross-border sale um, to a private consumer 
usually take place via web shop or uh, via marketplaces like, for example, Amazon or Salando. So now you might ask why what is new? This because we already know distance selling rules. The new thing is that the old threshold, the national threshold, will abolish with effect of July 1st, 2021. That means that the states will be subject to VAT in the country of residence of the private consumer. So you will have to charge foreign VAT on your sales in each case. Um, the second news is that there will be yeah, new um, declaration possibilities for the VAT filings. You have the choice either to register for VAT in all EU member states where your consumers are resident, or you can apply for the new one-stop shop. Maria already mentioned the mini one-stop shop for special services. We already know since 2000, uh, 2015. Um, and that will be now the new one stop shop for all the distance sales. Um, if we go, we have a look on what is the one stop shop. Um, Helen, switch over, please. Um, yeah, the new one stop shop is the new declaration you can declare all distance sales to private consumers as well as all b2c services with place of supply in the country of the recipients uh, like you already did with the mini one-stop shop um, for the declaration all eu member states will implement a portal an online portal where you can register your entity and yeah you will file on a quarterly basis one VAT return, including all sales to private consumers. But you have to keep be, be in mind two notes. The one that even if you have to file only one red return, you have to um, apply the local VAT rates. So we'll, we'll, we'll need to do some research on that. Second is that in case you have costs, and expenses with local VAT, you will not be allowed to apply for the refund via the one-stop shop system, but you will have to file a wet refund application um, that you already might also know. Yeah, I um, mentioned one little, there's one little simpli simplification that remains. Um, as I already mentioned, the national distance selling thresholds uh, abolish uh, from July 1st on, but there will remain a little yeah, threshold of 10,000 euros that is an EU-wide threshold. That means um, if your company has distance sales with a volume of less than 10,000 euros, um, the new rules will not apply and the VAT will, due, will be due in your country, as a country of supplier. But in that case, you have the choice to apply for the rules also. If you exceed the thresholds, uh, the VAT will always be due in the recipient country. Um, and now I would like to give you a short example on how to determine these new thresholds. Um, now we are in the 1st of July and the question is whether the new rules apply for your company. Um, you will, first you will have to consider the previous year and the current year and ask whether the 10,000 euros will be exceeded. You also have to sum up the distance sales and the services provided via electronic means. Um, and second, for the perspective of 1st of July, you need already to consider the sales of 2020 and the first half year 2021. We just made two examples, case one. Distance sales 2020, 5,000 euro. Um, distance sales first half year 2021, 6,000 euros and distance sales uh, second half year 2021, 2,000 euros. 
you can see that the threshold is not exceeded neither in 2020 nor in 2021. So the distance rule is not applicable and VAT is due in your country if you do not choice to apply for the new rule. In case B, uh, the sales in 2020 are 12,000 euro and here you can see the threshold is already exceeded. So automatically the new rule will apply for your company from 2020, uh, from July on. So I think we talked enough now about the theoretic uh, items. People, could you make a short example, please? Well, of course. Um, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, let's uh, go to our uh, case study. It's about the Dutch web shop Blue Sox. And uh, Blue Sox is selling uh, socks via the internet via its web shop. And the total sales to private individuals in Belgium and Germany are more than um, uh, 10,000 euros, 6,000 and 5,000. The current situation until the 1st of July is very simple because it's a Dutch web shop. Dutch VAT is due and Dutch VAT can be included as well as a turnover in the Dutch VAT return. So that's very simple, it's no problem. But that will change from the 1st of July. Next slide, please, uh, Helen. Okay, from the 1st of July, uh, the VAT is due in the EU member states of the, uh, of the customers, of the recipients of the goods. That means that it's no longer Dutch VAT that's due, but in this situation, German VAT and Belgium VAT. This implies that uh, compared to the situation before the 1st of July, uh, Blue Sox has to uh, or, or register in Germany and Belgium for the VAT or will have to uh, arrange uh, that it's all, it, it, it is registered to uh, apply the one-stop shop system and uh, to uh, submit one-stop shop returns in the Netherlands. Next slide, please, Helen. In case Blue Socks would sell EU goods via an online platform, that's possible as well, until the 1st of July, everything can be uh, arranged via a Dutch VAT return. Dutch VAT is due for these transactions to Belgium and Germany. So it's no problem at all, and it's very simple. But also, this is going to change from the 1st of July this year. Next slide, please, Helen. From the 1st of July, uh, also when the goods indeed are delivered via an online platform, the VAT is due in the EU member state of the customer, so in Germany and Belgium. And also this will mean, just in the situation that the goods are delivered from their own web shop, so not via the online platform, uh, VAT registration in Germany or in Belgium, or they will have to apply the one-stop shop return uh, on a quarterly basis, and they will have to register for this in the Netherlands. So this, this, this is indeed, if you look at the, the situation, uh, something that has to be changed uh, by Blue Socks. They cannot continue uh, with their distance selling only via their uh, Dutch VAT registration, they will have to arrange something in other, uh, or, uh, other EU member states like Germany and Belgium, or to take care that they are registered for the one-stop shop returns. Next slide, please, Helen. So, well, just to, to have a little checklist, uh, what has to be arranged by Blue Sox? Well, they uh, have to mind new EY distance selling thresholds, as um, uh, pointed out by Karen. And in case indeed uh, they are exceeding this one, uh, this 10,000 euro threshold, they do have to charge uh, the foreign VAT, in this case, Belgian and German VAT. And please keep in mind that uh, they 
uh, have to choose for the one-stop shop system or the local registration in the uh, local vet registration in the countries where the customers are uh, residing. So they cannot uh, choose for one country, for instance, for the one-stop shop system and for another country to have their local registration right there. So they have to arrange immediately what, what they would want to do with the, um, uh, the registration. And please keep in mind, just for the Netherlands, and that's especially in the case of Blue Sox, they have to submit the application for the one-stop shop registration before the 1st of June. Uh, in the Netherlands, we do have a uh, four weeks deadline before the start of the quarter. Of course, they will have to charge the correct VAT rates because the VAT rates are not the same in all EU member states. And uh, this will mean an adjustment of the ERP systems of the organization and the software and also the website. And of course, on the website, has to, for the website, has to be decided what they would like to do with the pricing pricing on the site because of the different fat rates. Next slide, Helen. Blue Sox, uh, it's, uh, that's, that's our, uh, uh, our case during this, uh, this, this webinar, uh, is, this, is thinking about uh, this distance selling of new products from the 1st of July. They think it would be a nice trade to, to sell face masks, face mask against the COVID. Well, um, in the new situation from the 1st of July, this means that um, uh, uh, they uh, will have to arrange uh, indeed, uh, again, this uh, registrations in Germany and Belgium or the one-stop shop return. But please keep in mind that the, they will have to take in, 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 if they, they will have to arrange that they know exactly what vet rates are applicable. For instance, for these kinds of special COVID uh, products, uh, several member states do uh, apply sometimes the reduced rates or zero rates, and sometimes they don't. For instance, in the Netherlands, we do have a zero, zero rate. In Belgium, uh, the face masks are fixed with 6% VAT and Germany, the regular uh, standard rate is applicable. So this has to be uh, sorted out by uh, Blue Sox uh, very carefully, and not only for this situation with the face mask, but also for all their products. Next slide, please. Here you have a short overview of the VAT rates in, uh, in Europe. Uh, as you can see, uh, every country has its own fat rates. And um, well, this means that you have to be very carefully when you are indeed selling your products and indeed are uh, determining what, which price would be applicable in a certain uh, member state. Of, of course, if it, the, the a reused rate is not applicable, uh, after uh, you have sold the goods uh, and uh, calculated a, a certain margin, you could indeed uh, seen, uh, see that your, your, your margin that as you had calculated is turned into a loss. What can be done in advance is check the links as we have inserted on this slide. Uh, of the European Commission. And even there is a kind of a search engine and if you enter the, uh, the, the good codes uh, and the, the description of the, of the goods, then you can uh, exactly see what that rate is applicable in what member states. Okay, well, it's, this is um, uh, the start with Blue Sox and um, uh, uh, Gianluca will uh, go further with the other slides. Yeah, it's up to me. Yes, uh, we now we want to talk about uh, uh, changes related to a uh, new regulation concerning the import of goods from uh, outside uh, EU. Uh, the first point uh, we have to focus on uh, concerns uh, thresholds for importation. There are uh, important changes. The first one 
one of the most important, I think, is that the VAT exemption for small consignments, I refer to goods having a value um, lower than uh, 22 euros, will be abolished. And it is a very, very important uh, point because uh, uh, some non-EU uh, companies uh, took advantages from, from this because they, they did not use to uh, charge VAT to their uh, customers. So this uh, exemption will be abolished in the EU. It is very, very important. Another uh, very another relevant exemption uh, regards uh, import duties, uh, the threshold provisions, and uh, concern the, the the import duties exemption related to goods having a, a value lower than 150 euros. Another important new uh, point is in the introduction of import one stop shop IOWS and uh, it is uh, um, related uh, to um, the, the possibility to prevent uh, private individuals uh, incur import VAT for goods with a value um, lower than uh, 150 uh, euros. Okay, so it is applicable only um, for uh, goods having uh, a value, I repeat, uh, lower than 150 euros. Okay, what happens with uh, import one stop shop? Um, if um, the IO double S is applied, we have these uh, consequences. Uh, the first one is exemption of import VAT. Okay, so uh, when uh, the, uh, the goods are imported, uh, there is an exception uh, related to import VAT, very important point. However, the supply of the goods is taxed with VAT in the country of the recipient. We will see in uh, this in the, the, in the example in the next slides. Uh, it means that uh, the VAT is charged in the in the price. Uh, then the the entity, the foreign entity, the non-EU entity, have to has to pay the VAT, the local VAT, uh, via monthly IOWS return every every month. Okay, so there is an exemption regarding import VAT, but uh, the, um, the foreign entity through, for example, a fiscal uh, representative has to pay the uh, VAT related to the supply. So the price for the consumer is, uh, includes the VAT. Okay, so let's go to the examples. Next slide, okay. So coming back to blue socks now from from India, we have completely changed the, the country. Okay, uh, so sale of socks from India. Okay, let's see the current situation until the end of June, since the new regulation will be um, applicable uh, starting from uh, the first day of July. So the current situation till June would be the following. Okay, we have to um, to take in our mind that at the moment, so till the end of June, there is this uh, VAT exemption uh, threshold for uh, goods having a value uh, lower than 22 euros. So there is an exemption concerning VAT on supply, an exemption concerning VAT on importation, and in the end, an exemption on import duties. So the Indian entity is very lucky till June since uh, it, it can profit from these three exemptions. So in theory, it can offer best price, prices compared to EU entities concerning these stocks. Okay, so Let's see now the examples regarding the new situation 
starting from the first day of July. Okay. In this case, we um, we look at the situation in which the uh, the new regime uh, IOWS is not uh, um, applied. Applied, and uh, um, in this case, we are. Uh, always talking about goods having a value lower than uh, 22 euros. So we don't have VAT on supply, but as explained before, we have VAT on uh, importation. Okay, so VAT has to be paid by the private individual to the logistics service supplier, okay? Uh, since uh, the uh, logistics service supplier has to pay uh, the VAT uh, when it imports the goods uh, and um, uh, the, the VAT is due at the custom of the EU uh, country. Okay, in, in the end, we have to outline that also in this case, uh, import duties uh, are not due because we um, because the uh, exemption till 150 user, uh, euros uh, is applicable okay so let's see what happens uh, if we uh, apply the new regime IOWS okay so we are talking about the new situation starting from the first day of July we are always talking about goods having a value lower than 22 euros. So in this case, which is the difference um, compared to the previous case? That VAT is not due on importation, but is due on supply. So VAT is paid by the consumer and it is directly included in the purchase price. And then the company, the entity, will pay the VAT via monthly IOWS return. Okay. And uh, as a consequence, as mentioned before, the import of the goods is, is, is exempted uh, since uh, VAT is um, applied on uh, supply. Uh, also, in this case, uh, uh, the uh, exemption uh, concerning import duties is applicable. I repeat, uh, uh, this exemption for import duties is applicable uh, for all goods having uh, a value lower than 150 euros. Okay, then we, we can uh, come back from India. Okay, and uh, I think it's... Um, up to uh, Ludmilla. Thank you, Gianluca. Uh, so uh, another change that will enter into force from 1st of July, uh, these are uh, higher responsibilities for, for platforms uh, from, from this period on. This is due to high amount of VAT fraud that uh, was <laughs> performed through marketing platforms and many of countries have complained uh, a lot due this, in this situation. So uh, from the 1st July on, platforms that uh, facilitate uh, the contact between the private client and the supplier will be considered as new uh, taxable persons. And uh, when it is considered that supply is arranged via the platform, it is considered when uh, the platform facilitates uh, the order placement and uh, the payment of transactions. Uh, platforms that only facilitate payments, uh, they will not be considered as uh, taxpayers for VAT purposes, at least till 2023. And uh, other platforms that, that are just facilitating or that are, that are just uh, doing advertising of, of other uh, platforms uh, that do facilitate will not be considered as uh, taxpayers also. So uh, from this, uh, uh, this platform fiction, 
uh, with this platform fiction, the uh, the platform will be considered as a taxable person, and uh, the same tra uh, the same delivery of goods uh, will be divided into two transactions. The first transaction from the supplier to the platform, uh, and the second transaction uh, from platform to the final client. The first transaction will be considered as exempt in case goods are uh, in European Union territory or non-subject to VAT if these goods are outside of European Union. And the, and the following transaction will be subject to VAT uh, according uh, to rules already explained by Karim and Gianluca. Uh, this uh, platform fiction is only applicable in, in two cases. The first case is uh, when goods haven't uh, yet been imported into the European Union and their value is lower than 150 euros. Uh, and in second case, when uh, we are before intra-EU sale, to a private individuals, but the supplier is the non-European uh, entrepreneur. Uh, this is done uh, in order to avoid uh, to the tax authorities to challenge or to find a non-European uh, Union entrepreneur to recover VAT. So the, in these cases, uh, the platforms will be liable to, uh, to pay, uh, to declare and pay VAT on these transactions. Uh, platforms are able to do it through the uh, one-stop shop or through import one-stop shop or they can be registered in any country of the European Union and declare all sales uh, directly in these uh, countries. Besides this uh, liability, our uh, so uh, the tax authorities impose a new liability to keep all records of all transactions for the last 10 years, not only transactions where the uh, platform appears as a taxpayer, but also of all transactions in which intermediated uh, the platform. So the following, uh, the following slide, Helen, please. Sorry. So in our in the following slide, uh, let's see what happens uh, with uh, companies that use warehouse houses in other countries. This could be the case uh, of a Dutch company that uses a marketplace and uh, a warehouse of this marketplace, or uh, its uh, own warehouse. So in our case with a Blue Sox Dutch company, let's say this Blue Sox Dutch company has a warehouse in Spain due to lower costs of warehouse and uh, does the delivery of goods directly to final uh, consumers in Germany, in France, in let's say in Portugal or in Spain. And so the goods are directly served from this warehouse. So, so from the 1st uh, of July, the company, the Dutch company can declare all these transactions sales through one-stop shop declaration, but there will be a, a still a liability to declare EU lists uh, an informative return for all transfers done from, uh, from Holland to Spain. So in this case, uh, it will not be the case of uh, end of registration because the Dutch entity will still be, still be liable to be, uh, to be registered in Spain and declare EU transactions in Spain, as well as if they surpass uh, an interest up uh, returns. On the other hand, what, what happens with a, a transaction performed uh, directly in Spain? So if goods uh, are delivered from the warehouse directly to private uh, customer in Spain. In this case, one-stop shop will not be applicable because there is no uh, transport uh, from one EU country to another one. So it will be uh, declared as an internal transaction. So Helen, the following slide, please. 
and uh, as uh, already has been mentioned uh, in Spain it is also enforced from the 1st of July and all companies can opt out till 30th of June. Uh, this is due, due to the fact that our law has been entered into force from 28th of April and um, tax returns are being prepared till the moment. So I think uh, till the last day we will be submitting uh, opting out for our clients. And uh, the option will be uh, all companies can opt out uh, till the end of this quarter or uh, can opt out uh, the country where they can uh, want to declare one-stop shop. As in other, all other countries, the VAT permit return uh, for one-stop shop will be on a quarterly, quarterly basis and uh, import one-stop shop will be submitted on a monthly basis. Besides, our tax authorities will require uh, lists of all transactions uh, so that they can check if uh, returns are performed correctly. Okay, so I will forward to my colleague, Gianluca. Okay, uh, we, we go on with our journey uh, in uh, our uh, own countries. Uh, we talk about the, the situation about the new regulation, the implementation of the new regulation uh, in, uh, in Italy. Okay, the registration uh, for uh, concerning the two new regimes is, is possible and uh, um, is possible from April. Okay, so uh, companies um, can um, can register themselves directly in the website of the Italian Tax Authority, the so-called Agenzia delle Entrate. Okay. So it is possible, but we have to uh, to say that at the moment uh, the decrees implementing the new regulation are not available. They have not been definitely approved. We only have drafts, and so uh, therefore the the rules uh, are not so so clear, completely clear. We don't have uh, uh, instruction for from our uh, tax authority. So. We have to wait uh, in order to know all the uh, ins and outs concerning the new regulation and the interpretation of the Italian uh, tax authority. Um, concerning the, the option, uh, the timing of the option, uh, we have to, to say that in general, the option um, Will uh, will start from the first day of the calendar quarter following the death of the the one of the registration. Okay, so it is quite similar to other countries, but we will see that there are some some uh, differences, and uh, Peter um, will talk about that. I think. Okay, uh, so the deadlines are not the same in in uh, all the uh, EU countries. Okay. Uh, then I'd like to uh, focus your attention or, uh, on a peculiar aspect related to uh, UK. Okay, um, so the UK uh, perspective. So, uh, Ellen, can you? Thank you. Okay, so Italy from the UK perspective. Okay, we start with spaghetti. Okay just to uh, to make it a little bit more interesting since uh, VAT I understand is a little bit boring okay so um, yeah the important point I think uh, Maria will will also clarify this uh, disadvantage because it is an advantage uh, the first point is that the Italian tax authority has officially clarified um, the first day of February, that uh, the EU, EU VAT registration procedure in Italy is still valid for UK entities. Consequently, a, fix, a, a fiscal VAT representative for UK entities is not required. So they do not need, the UK entities do not need to deregister from uh, the uh, EU uh, registration. So it is very, very interesting. Also, Regarding uh, this fact, 
and it means that uh, um, we have to to think about the main difference between the EU VAT registration and the appointment of the VAT representative. The main difference is that the VAT re representative in a in, in a in a law in a country for a foreign entities is usually and in Italy is is uh, this is the case is jointly liable with the foreign entity for VAT obligations, and therefore usually our firms a, a, a firm like my, mine when uh, is uh, when is appointed uh, as uh, VAT representative. And it's uh, uh, bank guarantees because of this uh, responsibility. And uh, with the EU um, uh, I did a registration, EU VAT registration, this uh, bank guarantee is not required since uh, there, there's not uh, a VAT representative. So it is a very, very important point that uh, uh, makes uh, things easier for uh, UK entities. Um, this simplification will have also a positive impact uh, for uh, the UK entities uh, uh, that uh, want to apply for uh, IOWS in, in Italy because with the re this regime you need uh, a, VAT, uh, a fiscal representative in the, in the, in the country. Okay, um, I want to, to outline also the fact that uh, this simplification is valid only for another country, and this country is Norway. Okay, so the simplification is, is applicable for UK and also Norway. Okay, so Karen, I think, uh, is the time for Germany. Okay. Right. Sorry for the audience, but no spaghetti for Germany. Um, I'm only <laughs> going VAT facts again. So in Germany, we already implemented uh, all the new rules. We have the new law already um, changed uh, in, uh, yeah, in the beginning of 2020, of course, with effect from July on. And we have a big booklet with about 40 pages of examples and application rules from the German Fiscal Authority already in place. Um, if you want to apply for the import one-stop shop or the one-stop shop in Germany, you have to file the, uh, the registration uh, before the start of the quarter or the month or say the period you want to use it for. Um, so the same as in Spain. Um, only exemption if you exceed the threshold for the first time, you still can file the application um, by the 10th day of the month following the month where the threshold is exceeded. Always long sentences for VAT rules, right? Uh, please the next slide, um, Helen. Um, if you want to uh, register for IOSS or OSS, you have to do this via the web portal of the uh, German um, tax offices. Um, you have to file the registration, as already mentioned, uh, for 1st of July by the end of June. So if you want to apply, it, you should really start now with the registration because we do not know how good the IT systems will work. And we also assume that we will file the application till the last day uh, of June. Um, little sidestep to the customs authorities. Um, we do not really know if the customs authorities will be ready by July 1st in Germany. Um, we do we did receive the information that they might only be prepared with the IT systems by the beginning of 2022, mm -hmm. but that is not finally confirmed. So maybe that could be a little mismatch and you might need to uh, use the old rules for customs and already use IOSS uh, for VAT. Uh, that, yeah, we will keep an eye on that one. Uh, if you want to uh, apply for IOSS and you are a non-resident company, you need to apply for 
Fiscal Representative um, also in Germany. And we in Germany, we also have this exception that Luca mentioned, but only for Norwegian companies, not for UK companies at the moment. Yes, and I think I now can hand over to Peter again. Yeah, well, thank you, Karen. Um, indeed, some specialties for the Netherlands, the registration for the optional uh, one-stop shop and import one-stop shop is uh, started. Um, we have all in the Netherlands all uh, the, the legislation and regulations in place. And I would um, draw your attention uh, to the website of the Dutch Tax Administration also, because Dutch Tax Administration although they had uh, problems with their IT systems, uh, they do have a very nice website with all information also in English. Uh, what about uh, the, the IT problems? Well, the point in the Netherlands is that we have the, the oldest uh, uh, system, the oldest computer system and the biggest one uh, from the world uh, some time ago, but this is not uh, so very uh, modern anymore. And it's effectively, you could say, so old that uh, in, in, practically for the VAT, that there is there could arise a problem if they adjust too much at it, and for that reason, uh, the Dutch tax administration uh, had asked uh, to the European Commission to postpone the the, uh, the new e-commerce arrangements until uh, next year, but this has been denied that request, and now they are doing their utmost to get things arranged via a so-called emergency track. And this emergency track in principle means that in uh, for, for the Dutch entrepreneurs, registration and filing of the uh, one-stop shop and import one-stop shop uh, VAT returns is only possible via the portal Mijn Belasting in Zakelijk. And therefore you need authorization via a herkenning level three. And well, for a lot of entrepreneurs, that is difficult. For foreign entrepreneurs, there's a possibility to register via uh, the, the tax administration for foreigners. And uh, also, another point is that uh, this emergency track will uh, cause more manual rework and rework and checks by the Dutch tax administration. And also, uh, we expect more uh, contacts with the tax administration and entrepreneurs than usual than you should usual expect and for that reason uh, it, it's a good thing that in case uh, for instance uh, um, a distant seller has already registrations in all eu member states and does not expect that uh, he will uh, sell to uh, customers in other eu member states than where he has this registration he could uh, also wait and see and keep his old systems uh, and uh, of course uh, paying the VAT due in that member states and then see later on whether this in the, the one-stop shop system would work for him. Okay, that's for the, uh, the Netherlands so far. And now I will hand over to, I think, Maria. Thank you, Peter. Um, so we've we've had a look at how um, the new one-stop shop works in Europe, um, but sadly the UK is no longer in the gang, um, and we've we've left Europe with the first of officially with the first of January 2021. Um, so whilst these rules still apply to um, online sellers, they are from a different perspective. They're from the import one-stop shop perspective. Um, so some of these rules that we have here on this slide have already been explained um, earlier by my colleagues, but essentially what we're looking at from a UK perspective, a new, an e, uh, sorry, a UK online seller into the EU is from the 1st of July. They have to be mindful of the low value consignment relief having been removed, um, anything under 22 euros. Um, and in fact, they're in, they now have to look at the import one-stop shop uh, the IOSS being available for all web sales, um, which are valued at less than 150 euros. Um, UK sellers will need to effectively register for the IOSS in an EU member state, so they can choose whichever EU member state they wish to, to register in. Um, that might be based on 
you know, they may already have some VAT registrations in Europe and they may wish to register in one of those countries where maybe they hold stock. Um, you know, the, whatever the reason, they have to choose a country and register there. Um, they, as explained, they may also need to appoint a fiscal representative, though we are aware um, that some states have removed this requirement for VAT, though the one stop shop or the, the IOSS does have additional requirements for fiscal representatives and indeed it's not quite clear how many states will require a fiscal representative to be um, put in place um, at this point in time because the rules are still so new and countries are still deciding how they wish to approach this. So um, whilst Italy have been good enough to say that's not required, um, it's not very clear which other European states will allow that. Um, once registered, for the IOSS, all sales must include VAT due at the rate applicable in the customer's country. So as everyone has said so far, um, ERP systems will need to be able to cope with accounting for VAT in all the different EU countries and be able to build that into the, the online sales price shown. Um, and your IOSS number has to be provided to the carrier to ensure the import VAT is not charged. So it's flagged online that this is something that yeah, a sale that falls below 150 euros and therefore is subject to the exemption for import VAT. Um, next slide, please, Helen. Um, so just continuing UK web sales to the EU customers, um, any sales that may be valued over 150 a euro, nearly said thousand euros. That that would be a big sale. Uh, One hundred and fifty euros. Th these can't be declared via the IOSS and must be treated as a standard import to the EU um, in the member state of destination. So um, this is where um, these sales will either have to be declared by the seller via a local VAT registration. So as I said a moment ago, the these sellers may already have local VAT registrations where they've already exceeded distance selling thresholds prior to um, us exiting uh, the EU last year, the end, of the, the end of 2020, or they would require your customer to act as the importer of record for those goods, the IOR. So any sales over 150 euros either have to be declared by the seller by a local VAT registration in the country of destination or you have to push that requirement onto your customer and have them act as the importer of record. Where your customer is going to act as the importer of record, then the UK seller can opt to send those goods um, via um, delivered duty paid via the carrier. So that means that the UK seller is effectively taking responsibility to account for um, the cost of import VAT and duty, and in fact, often has that quite cost pass back to them with no means to immediately recover that cost. Um, alternatively, um, the delivery charges, the DDP charges can be built into the sales price, which unfortunately then may make the UK goods less appealing to EU customers because they'll be more expensive than the EU alternatives because you've had to build in um, costs that you wouldn't otherwise recover. Um, but that's the two options there. Um, last slide, please. Um, and finally, obviously, there are also our EU sellers, e-commerce sellers who sell to UK consumers. Um, and again, from the 1st of January, there are some changes being implemented here because we're no longer part of the EU. Um, and unfortunately, there is no threshold for EU sellers um, to register for VAT in the UK. It's basically VAT registration from one euro essentially. Um, so there is no distance sales threshold and as soon as a supply is made in the UK, an EU seller is required to register for UK VAT um, and probably needs to obtain a UK EORI number so that they can account for the VAT on all their sales and indeed they can um, recover import VAT if they bulk move goods into the UK under the normal importing regulations. Um, so as before, sales valued at less than 150 euros are free from import VAT and duty charges when they come into the UK. Um, but sales over this are subject to the normal import VAT regulations, albeit once you're VAT registered in the UK as a business, you can recover import VAT and it's not an absolute cost. However, duty charges are irrecoverable um, and must be paid at the time of import. 
um, the UK government has, has an, uh, introduced a new um, easement, it's called um, postponed VAT accounting, and this has been uh, implemented to ease the burden of import VAT on EU sellers or anyone who is importing goods into the UK um, to make it easier to account for VAT rather than having to pay it up front at the point of import. It can be accounted for on um, the VAT registered uh, businesses VAT return similar to how um, acquisition tax used to be accounted for. So essentially, import VAT can be accounted for on the VAT return and recovered at the same time in the same return. So it's, it's a cash flow uh, advantage to businesses that has been introduced, um, although businesses do have to actively tell their carriers that they wish to use this um, easement and that they, um, they then have to sign up to get digital certificates which allows them to uh, recover that import VAT, it's the evidence of import tax at a later date. Um, and finally, um, EU sellers may also need a fiscal representative, but not for VAT purposes, albeit you might need a VAT agent to help you prepare your VAT returns, but for duty purposes, as um, you can easily um, deal with the duty regulations in the UK if you're not established here. Okay. And I'm going to hand over now to Karen, I think, to give you a bit of a summary of everything that we've chatted about. Yeah, yeah, kind of a little summary or a little checklist again. And what are now the next steps? We have been talking about the new rules uh, applicable from July 1st. And then it's now up to you um, whether to check whether those rules are applicable for your company. Um, we would suggest to ask your local tax advisor because some of the new rules are kind of complicated or not really easily to determine. Um, if you do so, you have to check whether you have sales and services to private consumers, cross-border sales and services, whether you are a non-EU resident or you are a EU resident, whether you sell via your own web shop or your marketplace like for example Amazon or or whatever. Um, what is the value of goods in case of import? Are you below or over 150 euro? And maybe the threshold of 10,000 euro could be applicable. Um, based on that, you have to check what red rates are applicable from July 1st onwards. And then we would recommend to definitely review your price list. We already mentioned that because it's your margin that could be yeah, lowered by, um, by higher red rates, for example. Um, yeah, please double check with your IT system provider, double check with your e-commerce provider, if you use e-commerce provider for your accountings, whether they are able to provide you proper documentation from 1st of July on so you, that you are able to file proper VAT returns. Uh, and finally, decide whether you want to uh, use uh, yeah register for the one top shop shop system or the import one stop shop shop system sorry or you whether you would like to stick to the local red registrations and either way you need to start the registration process now um yeah finally set up your declaration process and if there are any um, handbooks or, or something, please adjust those, train your staff and uh, yeah, adjust the internal compliance controls to be ready from July 1st on. Yes, so far from my side, um, Helen, back to you. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, I don't think we have any questions. I'm just going to ch check the panel again. No, um, we don't. Um, thank you, everyone, for being involved. Thank you to all of our panelists. Um, I'd like to say thank you to Peter, to Maria, Karen, Ludmilla, Jan Luca. And um, thank you very much for being involved in the um, webinar all of you in the audience if you have any questions you can visit our website for more insights such as this or if you think of anything after this event please do email us at mailbox at hlbi.com and we will pass your inquiries on to our panelists 
um, and try and help you with those inquiries. Um, thank you very much, all of you, for taking part in the panel today, um, and we hope to see you at a future event. Thank you very much. Does anyone else have anything to add from the panel? No. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.